<laughs> Live. <laughs> well, all right. So there are four buildings total. I don't need to tell anybody, you know, something they don't know, but there are separate buildings, all right? But the lighting control system is actually tied together into one homogenous system through using the uh, East Baton Rouge Lane, right? So it rides the local area network to provide a single system. Now there are certain aspects that operate separately and some that operate together, all right? So right now, um, like all the individual rooms, they're on motion sensors for the most part. Just about any enclosed room as we walk through, you're gonna see areas that have a motion sensor and I'll point those out. Um, the system operates semi-autonomously, just like you would expect a, a motion sensor to operate, right? So in those spaces with motion sensors, in general, there isn't really a schedule, right? There's no schedule to per se. It's the motion sensor is, is uh, gonna detect motion. And you're gonna see a couple different schemes with motion sensors in some areas uh, where there are no wall switches, like bathrooms and some other areas where there's no switches, the lights will come on automatically, right? In areas where there are switches, right, um, a lot of times, by the way, the, the design is is that you'll have to hit a button or turn the lights on, manually turn them on, and then the sensor will turn them off for you if you leave, right? So that's, there's some subtle differences to different places. I'll point out to you what I'm talking about. So you'll hear me, you'll hear me use terms such as automatic on, which is just basically as the name implies, hey, the sensors are gonna come on. Typically these are areas like stairwells and bathrooms where we don't wanna put switches because we don't want people messing with them and there are safety issues involved with having a switch. In other areas like private offices or classrooms and the rest of them, most of them should be manual on, auto off. If there are any areas that are not that way today when we do the walk around, um, we'll highlight them and we'll go check them and make sure that they are set the way to private. That's just a setting for us but that's the way the design is right now, is that the design says these areas are supposed to be manual on by the design. Um, the, um, so as we go through, then there's areas that are, that's pretty much the interior of the building everywhere. The exterior of the building, um, the lights, that is the lights on the outside, the lights that are under on the canopies, and the lights in the parking lot, the step lights out there, those are all on both time clock and photo cell. Um, so right now we're still kind of, because they're fed from four different buildings, we're still kind of working out the, to get the photo cells set properly to the same level and then also we're going to be tying them together a little bit later today so that they all should come on the whole site should come on and off together but when we do that we want to make sure that the site is coming on and off at the best possible time the optimal dust time. well dust to dawn is great but we have photo cells so um, i mean we could certainly do district dust to dawn but if you have a big storm that comes up at you know 5 a.m in the morning the photo cell might keep the lights on an extra 30 40 minutes we want to make sure that's 30 or 40 minutes not three or four hours Right, like right now, building the building D lights were on because it's a little bit overcast. That's not that's not right. It's, it's so we want to be able to give some flexibility, but again, we also want the system to look homogenous, right? We don't want, especially the center part, we don't want one building lights on and another one off, if unless that's what we you know we need that by design. So um, as we're walking around, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see censored areas and scheduled areas. Areas usually areas without wall controls. There's very few areas that don't have wall controls that have uh, a schedule in them, right? Because usually with a schedule, you have to have some sort of override and the rest of that, but we'll go through and do that. And with that, that's the overview. That's really, um, one, oh, I'll give one last thing. Uh, dimming, a lot of the spaces are dimmable, but not all, right? So we'll point out what areas have dimming. You may be surprised to find out that your gym actually has dimming in it. Um, the uh, dimming can be used both for presentation modes but it can also be used for energy savings, right? So, you know, people have different moods right now. Um, it's there, it's manual, right? So um, we can talk about it with the energy managers as far as, you know, some schemes for the future and how they can use that for energy savings. Um, right now, it's just basically there as a capa future capability. Okay? And the 24 hour circuit, yeah, yeah. light light circuit. Oh, and yes, and, and, yeah. yes. And you will notice that there's a lot of, when we start dimming and turning lights off, that there are lights that are left on by design there are uh, nightlight circuits in just about every path of egress. Just about any place where people may have to exit the building, there are nightlight circuits that are on um, by design 24 seven. Those lights are also egress lights in the fact that when we go on to generator, those will be the lights that are gonna be on as well, right? So right, right now, if you when we go turn the lights off and you go, hey, why are those lights still on? In most cases, it's because you're in a path of egress and they need those lights to get out of the building for safety's sake. Anything else, Frank? Did I miss? That's all. Any questions before we start the walk?
And once again, my name is Kyle. For those who missed it on the way by, just if you, if you don't need to stop me, are we going to walk? Yeah. Is that the next? Are you ready, Earl?